Okay, um, I don't know why I feel so awkward filming this. Okay, I'm gonna try not to be awkward. Great. So you're either here because you saw the title of the video and you think you're gonna get some really good tea, which there's gonna be tea, but not the kind you think, or you just happen to stumble across this video on your suggested page. And in that case, welcome. Please don't leave like and subscribe. But you're obviously here because you know there's a story to be told and I just don't know how to start this video. <laughs> I don't wanna mess anything up. I don't wanna forget anything. I don't wanna give the wrong impression. Maybe we can all just agree here and now that I may have a follow-up video. I know for sure I'm going to follow up on Rachel and I's podcast on the next All Things Internet episode because we're filming a last episode together and we wanted to let our viewers over there know what's going on. So if I forget anything in this video, hop over to that one. It comes out August 20 something, but I'm just gonna like speak. I'm gonna talk to you like I'm talking to a friend and hopefully all of this comes across exactly how I wanted and people get the truth and the real story and the explanation that you're looking for and we can all just be happy and Move along, that's the goal, I'm being awkward. All right, anyway, ugh, this is so weird. I'm moving to Texas, that's just the bottom line. Come August 31st, I am on a plane and I am headed out to Austin, Texas to move in with my girlfriend. And there's a bunch of reasons and factors and stories that go into this decision, but I do want it to be like known upfront before anyone else clicks off. This decision did not come lightly and it did not come because of anyone else. So let me reiterate that. I am not making this decision because of someone else. If you're new here, I moved to LA a year and a half ago to start working for my best friend, Rachel. She is a very successful content creator. She has three massive YouTube channels, two podcasts. She does the whole shebang. And she reached out to me when I was living in Virginia and she basically said, what do I have to do to get you back here in California so that you can help me edit, that we can come up with video ideas, we can film together. She basically, she wanted a full-time editor and assistant because her workload has gotten so big that she needed an extra pair of hands, someone to film, someone to help her edit, someone to keep track of everything, to help her with like life Life chores, whatever. And this is a job that I've been wanting and dreaming of for years. I am obsessed with social media. I'm obsessed with influencers and like everything like that. Like I literally, I went to college for editing. This has been a passion of mine since I was literally like 10 years old. And so when Rachel reached out to me and offered me this job, it was literally the biggest blessing I had received in a few years. I ended up moving out here. We've been working together for a year and a half and it has just been the most incredible, wild experience I have ever had. And it's just like this life that I never thought would ever be obtainable to me. She was presenting to me so openly and it was just the best time of my life. Like I know all of this sounds really cheesy, but for someone who has been wanting to be in this industry and has looked up to people who are in this industry since YouTube was created, this was literally a dream freaking come true for me. So I guess that leads to the question of why am I leaving? As I said in the beginning, there are several different factors that go into this. And one of them is finances. If you know anything about me, you know I'm always stressed about money. I grew up with very limited money, and so this will be something that carries with me for the rest of my life. I don't think there's ever going to be a point I will get to where I'll be like, ah, yes, I can relax and not be frugal anymore. It is ingrained in my brain to track every dollar, every penny, to have savings, to make sure I'm secure because at any moment something could happen and you have to have a safety net. I'm really thankful I'm like this because it does make me very responsible. And at the same time, it is one of the biggest stresses in my life. I wake up in the morning thinking about money. I go to work thinking about money. I go to the gas station, the grocery store. I'm checking my bank account. It's become an obsession for me. So even though Rachel has done everything in her power, I'm talking and like, I know there's a lot of people out there that claim she's not paying me enough. She is. She's paying me what I said I charge hourly. So despite Rachel doing everything she can to make sure that I'm financially secure, paying me a very competitive wage, it's still California. Gas is still $6 
$100 a gallon. Groceries alone a week. I know it might sound ridiculous to some people, but I spend $100 on groceries a week just for myself and I'm barely here. And it's not a lot of groceries. I know if like I was buying a huge amount for $100, everyone would be like, oh, that's really good. No, I'm buying like milk, cereal and bread. And they're like, yeah, that'll be $87.55, please. So it's just, it's ridiculous. The taxes are ridiculous here. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that this apartment is bleeding me dry. I live, without exaggeration, I would say in a 600 square foot studio, okay? I have no washer dryer, no heat, no central air, and no oven. And I pay $2,400 a month. So yeah, just believe me when I say, Rachel is doing everything she can to make sure I'm taken care of. But despite that, because of my student loans, because of Daisy's medical bills, because of my medical bills, because my computer broke when I moved out here, my car is actively breaking. I have a long distance girlfriend I fly to see. I had a dog to feed for a year and medicine to give her, medicine to give myself, psychiatric appointment. Like there's so much stuff that goes into it that people don't realize, or you do. And you can understand where I'm coming from. I just don't know how to get people to believe that I'm paid very well, but despite that, my rent, my utilities, my groceries, my gas, my medical bills, my medical bills for my dog, my food for my dog, everything feeds into this and bleeds me dry. I can't keep up with California and it just sucks. If I had a roommate, I think it would be different, but I couldn't have a roommate for a year and some change because my dog, she didn't like cats. She didn't like other dogs and she was really wary of strangers. So I didn't ever want to put anyone else at risk with, you know, her reactivity. And so I'm stuck. So please just like check off that little box, stop the rumors, stop the hate spreading. I receive a good salary. It's just freaking California. So that's the money aspect. I will never feel financially secure here. I don't think because it's just, it's so expensive. So that's what it boils down to with money. I'm paid well. I just can't keep up with expenses here in California. The second factor going into this is obviously my girlfriend. <laughs> So if you've watched any of my previous videos, my girlfriend Elle, she lives in Austin, Texas, and we've been doing long distance for 11 months now, and it's been hard. If you've ever been in a long distance relationship, you can understand what it's like. Initially, when we first started dating, we tried to see each other once every two weeks, and then we realized we couldn't afford that anymore. So despite having all the technology in the world where we can be on FaceTime together all day, we can text all day, you know, whatever, we can fly out to see each other. I think we knocked it down to like once every three or four weeks we miss each other <laughs> like this sucks and we're starting to get to the point where we can't even afford the once a month to go see each other because it's not just again it's with money it's it's not just paying the $150 or $200 flight it's like both of us have animals that we have to pay pet sitters to take care of I mean I don't anymore because RIP Daisy but I did um, and that drained a lot of my money so you have to pay for like a house or pet sitter you have to pay for the flight then it's like the rental car then you have to take the time off work we were very excited and a little too enthusiastic about it in the beginning and got a taste of what it's like to see each other every two weeks and it was amazing and so much fun and really helped our relationship blossom but then we looked at our bank accounts and they were just draining and reality hit us and so in the past few months we've been seeing each other a lot less and less and it's taking a toll on our relationship as it would with anyone it's not that we don't have a strong relationship or that we're not good for each other or that like whatever anyone wants to speculate anyone who cannot be with their partner physically it harms your relationship you know it's hard it causes tension, you miss each other. And a lot of what's been going on with us is that we're so desperate for time with one another because we're not getting those physical trips together anymore. Both of us are just obsessed with getting as much digital time as we can to make up for it. And it's hard. She has an adult job with adult hours and she does recreational sports and she coaches and she has friends and she has a life and we're in two different time zones. And so it's just, it's getting to a point where it truly is starting to affect our relationship because because when we can't be on FaceTime all day or we can't FaceTime for two hours before bed or one of us woke up late or one of us needs to go to bed early or one of us has a dinner we need to go to, it's it causes resentment. And it's no one's fault. This is just how life is. But you do end up resenting your partner for not giving you the time. I don't know if this is making sense. Like, obviously, I want her to go to the concert. I want her to go to dinner with her friends. I want her to see her sister. But that doesn't mean that I don't sit at home and I'm like, oh, this sucks. And I feel sorry for myself, which causes like issues down the line. So long distance relationships suck. They're hard. They're not fun. It requires a lot of work, which we've been putting in for 11 months. But I think both of us are getting to the end of it, especially when Daisy died. And I truly, for the first time in my life, was alone. I wanted so desperately to be with her more 
than anything. I wanted my partner here. I wanted my peace here. I wanted my comfort here and I couldn't have that. She came obviously to help me out when Daisy passed and to be with me and to spend time with me, but then she had to go home and like that sucked. And so especially when Daisy died, she also started going through a bunch of personal stuff in her life. And it's just, we need each other. Like we need each other. And I'm sure some people in the comments are gonna be like, that's toxic. You never need your partner. You should only just want them. Of course, like I don't need her to live and survive, but I want her. I want to wake up with her. I want to go to bed with her. I want to watch her come home from work and to talk about our days in person and to eat dinner together. Like I want those things. And so that is a huge factor going into this. I am so excited to have that with her. And we keep joking that this is gonna be the first time in our relationship that we're gonna get to date. We've never gotten to date. We date virtually, like we'll do virtual date nights and they're really cute, whatever. And when she comes to visit me, we'll go out to dinner, we'll go do a date night. But we got robbed of normal dating. We don't live in the same city. I can't just hit her up on a Friday night and be like, hey, do you wanna come out to dinner with me? Or like, hey, let's make plans for next week. It's like everything had to be very planned out, very robotic, very like, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like I'm not making sense, but, but basically we just, we keep like joking about it and getting very excited that even though we will be living in the same apartment together, we're so excited that we finally get to date. We get to do normal date nights. We don't have to like rush with our time because that's another big thing. Every time she visits me or I visit her, we feel like we don't ever have time for each other because we're trying to fit in as much as we can because either our friends want to meet our partner and hang out with them or we're trying to show them our city or we're trying to take them to meet family. Like there's always something big going on when we're visiting one another. And so we never just get the chance to exist together. So that's something we're very excited excited about. No time constraints, no rushing, no being pulled in a bunch of different directions. We just get to exist with each other. And I am so excited for this. So yeah, that's two of the big reasons, money and girlfriend. And then the third factor going into this, my mental health. So as we all know, I'm a mentally unstable little girly. Eh. Okay, anyway, sorry. I always have been. I got hit really hard with mental illness when I was in high school. And although I'm in very intense therapy, I'm on medication, it still affects my life. It's something I'm gonna carry with me for the rest of my life and that I actively have to work on and manage every single day. And I was doing okay for a while, especially when I first moved out here and all of these amazing things were happening. I was on an absolute high and then shit started hitting the fan. About three or four weeks after moving here, I think people got more comfortable with the fact that I was becoming a regular guest in the social media world. So I was showing up a lot on Rachel's vlogs. I was showing up a lot in her main channel videos. We were starting to do our podcast together in person. I was all over her Instagram, whatever. I was everywhere, which I love. I love content creating. So that was amazing for me. But that's when people started realizing that I was a target, I guess. And and so that sucked and I knew it. Like I knew coming into this profession, there's always gonna be people that hate you. You can't make everyone happy. There's always gonna be someone that doesn't like your style, that doesn't like the way you look, that doesn't like that you're happy. Like there's always gonna be someone out there that's gonna tear you down, that's gonna hate you, that's gonna send you mean messages. I think what I didn't realize was the quantity that was gonna come in. So that sucked. Um, and that was kind of like the turning, like I was going up, 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 up. And all of a sudden it was like, Kew! that's where it really started was when my inbox and my comment section and Rachel's comment section and Reddit forms and websites and everything started popping up, just criticizing me for everything. It didn't matter what I did. If I was loud, people would criticize me for being loud. If I toned it down, people criticized me for being boring. They were finding anything they could. And I know like that's something I work with with in therapy a lot is I can understand something completely, but it still doesn't make it easier for me to deal with. So while I can understand that these people that were commenting horrible things or sending me horrible things, whatever, while I can understand that obviously they're very sad people that have something bigger going on in their life and they're lashing out at me because I'm an easy target and they don't want to deal with themselves and their own problems. I can understand that. That's why all bullies bully is because something bigger is going on. They have bad self-esteem and it has nothing to do with me. I understand that. And at the same time, it doesn't mean that I wasn't sitting there reading this stuff and starting to create this incredibly negative image of myself. And it was just draining my mental health. It sucked. And this is something that I'm gonna have to deal with going forward, obviously, because I plan on staying in social media
media and this being my career and I know that I'm gonna have to learn to embrace it further. I feel like I've been doing a much better job these past few months, but I just wanted that to be like an explanation of like where I started downturning because I think it's good to know that this has been like a long coming journey and not just something that happened immediately and I'm like making a split second decision and I'm like, well, I can't handle this and I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm moving to Texas. It's like, this has been happening for a while. So the sudden influx of hate really started turning things for me. And then we got to get into my neighbor. So basically through my mental health starting to take a downturn, the two things I had in my life that were constantly keeping me grounded, keeping me here, as dramatic as that sounds, keeping me happy was my dog and my apartment. I know I complain about how much this apartment costs. It's not in a nice area. I didn't splurge. That's a whole nother story where basically I was backed into signing into this apartment. And so I got kind of got screwed with like the money. But all of that aside, I worked so hard to make this apartment a home. I painted, I hung up stuff, I made modifications, I decorated, like I did everything that I could to make this a very big safe space for me. And it worked. I, for the first time in my life, I actually didn't mind coming home alone and as quickly as I established this as my safe space and my peace it got ripped away so I think this is a story for another time but I'm gonna give you the spark notes version I'm gonna give you the too long didn't read version basically and I'm gonna I'm gonna quiet down because I'm still scared of him. Basically, one day I was sitting here and I was trying to edit a video for my YouTube channel. And all of a sudden, my upstairs neighbors who I've never met, never heard a peep out of, never had an issue with, started stomping around the floor, blaring music, being very obnoxious. It's, when I'm telling you it's a whole story time, it's a whole story time, but the condensed version is, is I went up there very nicely. I'm, I'm always, I always start with kindness. I'm always gonna start with kindness. So very kindly, I went up there and I said, hey, I'm a sound editor. I'm trying really hard to edit this video, but I can't really hear it because your bass is so loud. I don't care how loud your music is, but would you mind just turning down the bass so I can hear what I'm editing? And he was very nice and he was like, oh yeah, for sure. Sorry, 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 sorry. Turned it down that lasted about an hour until he went to work and his roommate came home, cranked it right back up. It was so loud that my walls are rattling. Same thing, went back up, explained to him. He was a little less nice, whatever, but said he would turn it down. And as soon as I got back down to my apartment, he cranked it up even louder and I swear put his speaker on the floor so my ceiling because stuff where is it right there started falling off my walls my dog was whining because it was hurting her ears you could hear it all the way out on the street it was absolutely ridiculous so I went back up there to knock on his door again to be like hey like I'm not sure what the issue is here I'm, I'm trying to resolve this like kindly can we just chat kept turning it up turning it up turning it up so that he couldn't hear me talking to him through the door I eventually said to him I was like look I'm trying really hard not to involve the leasing office or the police please could you just, you know, keep it down or at least turn your base down? It just kept getting worse and worse and worse. I let it go for about an hour or two. I actually left the apartment with my dog because it was so unbearable. Came back. It was still just as bad. I went to go knock on his door again, but this time there was a note written on his door and it was, I don't, and I'm, I'm so serious. I don't say this lightly. It was borderline a suicide note. And so I did call my leasing office. They referred me to the police. So then I called the non-emergency police line and the police couldn't tell me. I could tell it was a woman I was speaking to. She couldn't tell me what she wanted to tell me because you know some things you're not allowed to share but she basically warned me that I should not go up there again and asked if this sounds so dramatic she basically warned me not to go up there again hinting that she knew something that I did not she said that they would do a swing by she asked me what floor I was on and when I said I was on the first floor there was a long pause which scared me and suggested that I sleep with my windows closed for a little bit so needless to say as a woman living by herself and I had my dog and she was a great protection dog at the time. But despite all of that, I was utterly terrified for my life. I sent a picture because I took a picture of the note. I sent that picture of that note to a few of my friends and multiple of them. Again, I do not say this lightly. Multiple of them messaged back and was like, that is genuinely mass shooter vibes. I'm not going to post the note. I'm not going to say what it said. Use your imagination. But I was terrified. So my peace and my serenity and my safety got ripped out from underneath me and that sucked. I was scared to leave my apartment. I was scared to come home to my apartment. I don't have windows in my apartment. I only have this set of big glass unopenable windows except the one sliding glass door and I don't have central air. So if I want any type of cool air or breeze, I have to sleep with my sliding glass 
this door open. And Rachel was kind enough to come over and install this type of like bolt where I can leave my glass door open about this much so that a breeze can come in, but someone can't fit in. So that was really nice, but it doesn't matter. Like I just kept imagining him turning sideways and slithering through the little crack or like ripping it open or like bringing bolt cutters or following me into my apartment or following me out to the park. Like I was terrified. And so I know it sounds so dramatic and some of you are gonna like laugh at me for like saying all of this. It really was traumatizing. <laughs> And ever since that day, he has been retaliating. And so he will stomp around at three in the morning. So now I sleep with my portable AC unit on full blast, my industrial fan on full blast, my sound machine on full blast, my bathroom fan full blast and earplugs. And sometimes he still wakes me up. But at this point, I'm too scared to keep calling the police and I'm too scared to keep calling the leasing office. And I was advised legally not to go up there anymore. And so it's like, I'm trapped and this sucks. <laughs> so that was not fun. And then my dog Daisy, she was absolutely, when I say my entire freaking world, I mean it. She was literally keeping me alive. She was my reason for living. She was my absolute everything, my only steady in my life for nine and a half years, almost 10. After she died, that was the turning point for me. Um, she very suddenly passed away right before my birthday and it truly came out of nowhere and destroyed my life. So I was doing really great until my money started running out, the hate started coming in, my apartment and my safety got taken away, and then the final crushing factor was my entire world, my dog Daisy dying. It became way too much for me to handle. And thankfully, I have an incredible support group and I have a wonderful therapist and I have great coping skills, sort of. But at some point, everyone reaches their breaking point and that was mine. After Daisy passed away, I think I was at the lowest I have ever been in my entire life. And that's saying a lot because your girl has some major trauma, but that was it for me. All of these factors combined, all of my like fears, all of my stress, I wasn't getting any sleep. Like, like I'd be too, I was too scared to sleep. I, I couldn't sleep. I had no money. I was scared. Rachel was sweet enough to loan me her dog, Blaze, who's currently snoring on my couch. So I, I had a little bit of protection and I at least had company when like my friends weren't staying with me. But still, it's like my whole world was shattered and broken and everything that I thought was stable and good and amazing just no longer mattered to me because everything else bad that I had been through was just outweighing it so heavily. And so that is when I started thinking to myself, I got to change something. I got to do something. This isn't okay. This isn't healthy. This isn't sustainable. I got to, I got to switch it up. And that's when I started making plans about how I was going to do something to make myself better. And I obviously spent a lot of nights crying to my girlfriend about my life and it being in shambles and everything I'm stressed about. And she was the one that suggested that we move in together. She said, you know, if that's something you want to do, my door is always open. I would love to have you here. I would love to move in together. It was the most comforting thing I could have heard in that moment because I just knew I needed to start over almost. Like I needed to get out of here. I needed to move to a place where I am safe and secure and I can save money and not be so worried about it. And I can have someone with me like, you know, all the time. And I have comfort and stability and routine. And that's exactly what she was offering me. And so that's kind of when the wheels started churning. And I started seriously considering what it would look like if I left my job and moved to Texas. There have been too many ridiculous, horrible things that have happened in these past few months that in my head, the universe is screaming at me, you have to go. You have to change. Like, you have to get out of here. I'm not a religious person, but I do believe in cosmic pulls and I believe in cosmic plans. I just feel like certain things happen for a reason and signs are sent to you in order to push you in certain directions to help you with your life. And there has just been so much utter shit that has happened to me since April. So despite the neighbor, despite the dog, despite the money, despite the hate, even since all of that happened, there has been so much ridiculous shit to happen in my life since April that I'm like, it is literally the universe cutting every single excuse I have out of my life to give me no other option than to move to Austin and to chase my own social media career. <laughs> It's, it's just wild. I don't know. Sorry, my battery died. Where was I? I think I was like wrapping up 
my reasons because I really do want to make this clear. I don't want any rumors spread or any hate being sent to anyone or people coming to weird random conclusions. I want to make it very clear why I'm moving, why I made this decision, what led me to this, and what the plan is going forward. So maybe let's hop into that. Actually, no, my last point I wanted to get to. I think I've mentioned a few times now that when I move to Texas, I'm going to be starting really hardcore into my social media career. So this was kind of the plan from the get go with Rachel is I was going to move out here. I was going to host a podcast with her. I was going to be her editor, be her assistant. And at the same time, I was going to work on my social media career because this is what I want to do. I think I've said that a few times now, like this is my dream job. Being an influencer and a content creator is my dream job and I've been dreaming of this since I don't even know when YouTube came out. This was going to be the perfect opportunity for me to do that. But it turns out because everything's so expensive, I keep getting slapped with all of these unexpected expenses. I can't afford to take what limited time I have outside of working for Rachel, which is a normal nine to five and use that for personal things. So while I was working for Rachel, because of my finances, I also had to work for my company. I have a company. I think I've mentioned this a few times. I have a virtual assistant company. I work for people mostly in the wedding industry. So I have a DJ, I have a wedding photographer, and basically I do everything admin for them, but virtually. And my goal was when I moved out here is to stop, like to close that company, to close my company or to find someone, like hire someone to take over my company so I could make passive income off of it. But because I just kept getting hit with one financial crisis after another, I couldn't afford to take the risk to chase a social media career career in hopes that it would make up for the income that I was going to lose by closing my company. Does that make sense? So I, I had to continue working my second and third job. So I would get up at 637, take care of my dog. I would start working from eight until 930. And then I get ready for work. I'd be at work at 10. I'd work 10 to six. I'd come home. I would take care of my dog again. I'd eat some dinner and then I'd work from seven until midnight. And this was every day, except I wouldn't work on weekends for Rachel, but I was so behind on work for my company that by the time the weekends came around, I had to spend my entire weekend not hanging out with friends or having a social life or taking care of myself or relaxing or resting. I had to spend it doing makeup work and it sucked because this was my whole goal coming out here was to not only work for Rachel and have that steady income from Rachel, but to also build my own platforms so that I could be successful on my own. And I, I just simply could not do that. There physically was not enough of me to give. Mentally, there was not enough of me to give. I couldn't risk the money. I didn't have the time. There were literally, I would sit there on Zoom with my therapist and I would sob to her about how I wish there were more hours in the day because I would only be sleeping four to five hours a night and I still wouldn't be able to get my work done. What I had envisioned for myself for my foreseeable future was not obtainable. And while I love my job with Rachel, I'm stunted. If I'm gonna do this, I wanna freaking do it right. And because I'm being handed this opportunity on a silver platter that I may never get again in my life, you know, stability, time, sleep, a supportive partner, not worrying about money, because I may never be presented this perfect scenario again, I have to leap. I have to jump. And once again, it's just the universe telling me it's time. I have wanted to do this since I was 10 years old and God damn it, I'm 31 years old and it's time. So laugh if you want that I'm 31 and I am actually going to be chasing a YouTube career or a content creating career. But for once in my life, I believe in myself and I know I can do it, but I know that I can't do it unless I give it my all. So sadly, that means that I won't be working for Rachel anymore. We are still gonna be best friends. We're still gonna see each other. But for now, we're closing this chapter together. So I won't be her assistant anymore. I won't be on the podcast with her anymore. I won't be in her videos anymore. It's going to be just her and then it's going to be just me. It's sad, but it's also incredibly exciting at the same time. So that's the plan. I'm currently in the middle of packing my apartment and I'm going to move on the 31st. Um, I'm doing one last episode of All Things Internet with Rachel this upcoming week and I'm starting a brand new freaking chapter and I am terrified and so hopeful and excited at the same time. I am diving face first into social media. So my game plan for now is that I'm gonna start my own podcast and I'm trying to see if I can get 
someone to do it with me, but I'm just kind of waiting on an answer for them before revealing it to the world. But whether they can do it with me or not, I am starting my own podcast when I move to Austin. And I think it's going to be everything creepy. So it's going to be ghost stories and paranormal and alternate dimensions and conspiracies. And I don't know, it's just going to be everything like cool and creepy. And it's going to be a podcast about that. And I'm really excited to start that. And I'm also going to be posting a minimum of one vlog a week. And then I'm going to be posting a minimum of one like fun video a week. So whether that's like an internet challenge or extra footage or something that my girlfriend does with me, I don't know. But I'm basically going to be posting two YouTube videos a week and a podcast episode a week. So a lot of content. I'm very excited about it. And I'm seriously going to put everything I have into it because at this point I have to, like I have to, and I want to, this is my dream. And there's no other way to achieve it than to just dive the f in. I know this was a long video and I appreciate if you're still here. I'm a rambler, but yeah, I really hope you stick around. I am so excited to share this beautiful new chapter of my life that I'm about to start. I'm not going to half-ass anything. Sorry, my battery died again, maybe because I didn't let it charge all the way last time because I got impatient, but now it's charged all the way. That was a lie. Don't know why I lied to you. It's at 17%. I'm just going to talk really fast. But as I was saying, um, this won't happen in the future because to prepare for pumping out all the content that I'm about to pump out when I move to Austin. I have gone full out and don't worry, I'm being financially responsible, but I did just purchase a new computer, a new camera, extra batteries, extra SD cards so that I can be a professional at this. So you're gonna get a lot more content of me than you ever asked for. You're welcome. Maybe, I don't know, I hope you like it. I'm gonna be posting a ton on Instagram and TikTok and I'm gonna be posting a minimum of two YouTube videos a week. So if you haven't already, ooh, good plug. Can you plug on your own channel? I feel like you can. If you haven't already, hit the post bell notification button. Hit the little bell. Hit the bell and click always. Because I've been getting a lot of comments on my recent vlogs where people are saying that they had no idea even posted the vlog because YouTube didn't alert them. Not sure what's going on there. So if you scroll down where it says subscribe, click subscribe. Step number one. Step number two, get yourself a snack. Step number three, go to the little bell icon and click it and then click always or all the time. Whatever the yeah option is. I don't know. Oh my God, I'm starting to lose it. This is a long video, but any so that is the plan. No more all things internet, my own podcast, a bunch of content for you guys, uh, moving in with my girlfriend, and I am manifesting, gosh darn it, that my finances and my career and my mental health all just go in the positive direction, and I'm going to work my butt off to make that happen. So I really hope you stick around and you watch because I really do want to share my life with you guys. I love doing this. I love bringing you guys along for all the adventures and the good times and the bad. So I'm going to do my best to make sure that I'm making good content for you to watch because really all of this boils down to you. If you weren't watching, if you weren't subscribing, if you weren't sharing, commenting, liking, then none of this would be possible for me. So I really want to make sure to give you what you deserve, which is good content, share my life with you, bring you along, involve you, and we'll just see where it goes. I think it's going to be great. All right. That's it for now. Bye. <laughs>